founders, co-founders, uh, titles mattered less here, builders uh, in the field doing stuff. And we'll keep this one a little bit shorter because uh, I didn't want to cut short the investor one. It was super interesting. Um, there we go. My name is Tal. You met me earlier. Um, thanks again for coming. Thanks again for the Israel Robotics community. Super happy to support and collaborate. Looking forward to doing more stuff together. Um, I think we'll start with you guys saying a little bit about yourselves and your companies. Uh, the next question would be talk about the journey. So if you want to answer what the last year and a half looked like at the same time, that's okay too. All right. Good evening, everyone. Um, Aviv Melman, CEO and co-founder of Nakai Robotics. We've developed a fully autonomous system that is installed on cargo vessels and cleans them and inspect the hull while in transit. We're saving money on fuel, on emissions, also on water pollutions. Um, and about the journey, well, I think that you've asked me if, if I were, were, was doing it again. Absolutely yes, but, but we uh, bypassed or we managed to find a, res a, a solution for a challenge or a hurdle that many other startups have, specifically with hardware, which is knowledge, experience, and machinery. This is the biggest hurdle that we see in order to reach a better, um, to prove product market fit. We are fortunate to, to have it, um, so I'll repeat that again. But the current climate is uh, challenging and we're going to address that, I'm sure. Hi everyone, uh, my name is uh, Roy Amir. I'm uh, the Chief Product Officer of uh, Robotics. Uh, we do uh, autonomous robot for upkeep and inspection of uh, high-rise uh, buildings, basically cleaning uh, glass buildings and inspecting the exterior. I actually joined the company six months ago. The company is uh, up and running for the last two years. Uh, prior to the robotics, I was a co-founder of Intuition Robotics, where Samsung invested in us, uh, that the, the product side. And I think, uh, believe I think about the last two years, a year and a half, and the experience in my Previous round, like uh, the good times, right? and now it's the hard times. It all starts, you know, somebody from the investor side follow the money. It really starts from the economics and showing that you really, really understand and you have evidence how you're going to make money. There is demand, there is money on the other end because at the end of the day, everyone trying to lower the risk level. Financial risk. At this period of time, again, I'm uh, more on the product side, so less on the technology side. Is uh, much more on the customers. So, like, focus on them. Um, nice to meet you all. My name is Lior. I'm the CEO and co-founder of uh, Soltrex Automation. Uh, our company deals with solar farm O&M automation. Basically what we do is we try to take jobs that until now were made manually and utilize autonomous mobile robots in order to conduct them without the need of additional personnel. Uh, we founded the company in 2021. It's been a rough road. And I think that it's good. It's good for a startup company because with difficulty I think comes growth. I think everyone here uh, who did three years in the army probably know that. And once you come into rough economic seas, then you find yourself looking deep and looking hard and uh, checking your economics, checking your customers. And I think that we did a very long way. I think we've made very good interactions with the market. And I think that without those difficult times, we might have reached where we are less prepared. So I think that's a good thing. And happy to be with you guys here. Awesome, thank you. The next question is, what are the biggest challenges and opportunities of the, if you find in the current climate? So, you talked about the last two years, you started two years ago, things were like bright, terrible, bright, terrible, right? Like the market was there, not there, investors were there, not there. But right now, so June, July 2023, biggest challenges and opportunities that you guys see um, in, in your daily lives. So, I think that 2023 year is the year in which uh, capital became expensive. And that's a good thing and a bad thing. Because on the one hand, when someone 
dishes out money for the development or the procurement of any any device or a solution, they think twice. But then again, they have to think about it because in years of uh, economic uh, hardships, the need for optimization and being more efficient arises. So I think that this is a big challenge and opportunity, and I think that we all as startups also have to start thinking about ROI. How we create an economic model that brings the money that was invested in your company back. And I think those who can achieve that will be able to capitalize on current times. And I think we all need to change our mindsets accordingly. So I think it's a challenge and an opportunity in that manner. Uh, yeah, so obviously money, capital, is, uh, is hard now. I think it, it, it does two, it will do two things. One is to really sharpen your focus, right? Because uh, like a few years ago, you can, as we hear, dream big, right? Which is a good thing to have a, a big vision and want to change it to all. But on the other hand, when you're really constrained with, with resources, you really, really need to choose, right? So you cannot like bullshit yourself or your team because resources are scarce, right? So I think the, the prioritization and the focus and, and, and which drives again more financial focus. So like we did a lot of work how the company is two years old, right? And how until a year from now, there will be a sustainable revenue coming into the company, right? Not in two, three, four years from now, next year, right? And then you work backwards, what needs to happen, what trade-offs you need to make, uh, what you need to park for now, even if it was a big uh, part of the dream, and just to, to be much more in a, a survival mode, on the other hand, if you are focused, you have a good market, you know your customers, so your competitors probably are weaker. Makes a lot of sense. Um, I try to mainly look at opportunities, um, even though it's a challenging time, as mentioned um, many times. I would say that the biggest opportunity today is by global awakening. New regulations, specifically in our industry, actually brings customer to our doorstep. Um, and the fact that we have a real solution for a real problem, a real solution, aka a robot, um, to replace manual or dangerous jobs, um, that means that we have to educate the market less. They, again, are approaching us, but on the other hand, that goes to the challenge, it's to educate potential investors. Um, they've failed with previous hardware companies, previous bubbles, um, trends, all the way from VR to other hardware stuff in, in the past, and we feel that. We feel, we see those scars, um, and trying, at least from our perspective, to reflect how the industry uh, views us, or any other good company that solves a real problem with a real solution, is a challenge, and potential fundraising methods, as, sp as spoken here, are new. These are new business models uh, for production companies, for hardware-based companies um, that need to think outside of the box, need to find uh, experienced investors, and we don't see them very often. Frankly saying, they, they are mostly not here, I'm sorry that I'm being honest, but we are fundraising uh, for quite a while now, um, not with uh, these uh, two friends here, but two million dollars in, in uh, equity funding, that's not enough for a body company. Um, we must continue the growth and the scale and the momentum. So this is the, let's say, the combination, the opportunity, and on our side to reflect it to potential investors uh, and to find the, the right fit. Super interesting. Thank you. Um, what are the key trends in the coming years that you guys are relying on to support success or growth or in each of your categories? So one might say robots are becoming cheaper. AI is becoming better. A trend that you internally are kind of like counting on to support your growth. Is it coming? Is it coming soon? Are you sure it's coming? <laughs> a 
a big question, obviously. Um, we are relying on a trend that we see every day, we see everywhere, which is to replace human labor, manual labor, in our case, dangerous labor, uh, that kills divers or uh, that prevents um, running volume of traffic of goods in leading ports. So we, we rely on that. Um, we are not doing anything new. Um, again, in our case, people are cleaning vessels and ships for the past 5,000 years. However, we do it differently. Um, and we rely on that, uh, let's say, leap that the market took. But again, going to the challenge, um, we, we don't see it yet in, in real life in terms of uh, money coming in to, to companies, but maybe it will change. Maybe we'll wait for the next quarters and see the actual change from VC perspective. We see longer cycles. Um, and this, obviously, lower cost for hardware, more reliability of hardware, more space for generative AI for other software, machine learning solutions, obviously, we all use on a daily um, perspective. This is the trend the way I see it. So I, I will do a copy and paste on, on uh your answer, I think uh, we are also replacing labor, people like on buildings, uh, cleaning them, which is a high risk. Nobody wants to do it, there's short labor all over the world, more and more buildings are coming up. I, th I think from, uh, it's easier if I compare like when we started Intuition uh, Robotics seven years, eight years ago, seven years ago. A lot of change in terms of the platformization of uh, different layers. So the team effectiveness, the productivity, the development team, engineering team is, is uh, much higher. I think from a financial point of view, from an investment point of view, one thing that is changing and can Raymond knows about it is everyone are investors. Yeah. It used to be that we had VCs, right, or private equity. We are in the pop tech, so a lot of the uh, uh, interest we're getting, right? We are pre-market, we already have contracts uh, for millions of dollars for next year, and a lot of the interest of investors we're getting is from that industry. So these are big real estate companies, okay, so big shipping companies, right? Because everyone are turning into investors, either through LPs, funds or investing direct and they know your business, right? They know the domain, they understand what's happening, they understand the need. So from my personal experience, the process of actually raising from them uh, is very, very different from financial or professional investors. Um, so in my opinion, first of all, I said, of course, extremely true. I will try to take it a uh, little back. I think that one major change that we're seeing right now, not in the industry, but rather in the technology, is that many brilliant minds and many companies are working on allowing robots to understand where they, where they are, which is something that wasn't prevalent in the first uh, era in which robotics penetrated the industry. Usually those have been fixed robots, known platform with known payloads and they would just do their monotonous open loop task and everything would be okay. And I think the next major leap in the industry would be the phase in which robots would know how to localize, would know how to answer the question where we are and what surrounds us. And technology via a lot of uh, open source code, a lot of uh, companies that are doing very hard work has progressed and we are very much nearing the term in which robots would know how to efficiently map their surroundings in 3D, understand what surrounds them, and to, and to act upon those objects which they recognize. And I think once that comes, then we'll experience a huge shift towards robotics, because only then will robotics truly be able to do general, general tasks, to really replace human labor. And and we see it in the industry, we see it in the technology, we see it uh, in our R&D, that the ability to conduct true localization in outdoor environments is at hand, 
and this is a great deal of our research and development. And once that is achieved, I think we would not recognize the robotics industry. It would be completely different. It would be as regular as purchasing a KUKA or an ABBR to your factory. It would be a standard. And I think that would in turn drive lower costs in hardware, because right now robots are novelty. So I think those are the trends that uh, we are at the brink of. I think, I hope, one of us would uh, achieve those capabilities, and those will uh, would take uh, would take the prize, I guess. Super interesting. Thank you. I asked my eight-year-old son, uh, who's into robotics, uh, the nine-year-old version of this question, and he said, like, which is, what do you want to do when you grow up? And uh, hopefully, he's thinking about trends. He said, I want to build a robot that will do my homework for me. I'm just glad he doesn't know about ChatGPT yet. Yeah, it's sort of done. I wish I had that. Um, we're fighting against that awesome jazz quartet there, and I think uh, we're also coming up on time, so I'll, I'll give you an easier time than the previous panel. Uh, stick around so that people here can, can bug you with, uh, with their own questions. Um, at least to me, it was super insightful, especially when summing up everything that you've added on to each other, so, uh, so thank you. I forgot to say in the beginning, the obvious common thing in this uh, panel is that they're all building robots that clean stuff. Slightly less obvious is that they're all working really, really, really hard at building uh, very interesting, successful companies that are in the field with robots, climbing on things, doing things. So I think these guys know what they're talking about. They're in, they're in there living it. Um, take, the, take the chance, this chance that you're here to, to catch, catch up with them in the time we have left. And uh, thank you to Samsung for hosting, to uh, Azure Robotics for, for all the help and organizing and bringing all these wonderful people here. Um, see you again next time. Thanks, everyone.